Let's take a look at a typical casting item. In this case, we're looking at an L-bolt installation. Now, this is typical for, as you can see, a connection of four points. Where we're going to be using L-bolts or J-bolt installs, which only vary by the shape of the installed bar, where we're going to be typically using those is where we've got a, a base plate hold down uh, application. So anything where we want more than two bolts in place in the concrete cast in uh, and into sets of four, sets of six, sets of eight, etc. This becomes an ideal way to get a group of anchorage points placed. Obviously, one of the key benefits is being mounted about a steel plate. We know that once cast in, the four fixings in this case will be absolutely set in dimension to each other. So in this case, we've got a 300 square plate with 200 centers between anchors in both directions. Let's just confirm that before we go and put it anywhere near concrete. 300 square, 200 on the bolts dimensionally. So once we've got that cast in place, we'll absolutely have four anchorage points on a 200 square configuration. So as I mentioned, in this case, this is an L-bolt um, setup. Our bolts are in the shape of L's. They're also available in shapes of J's and other formats, and typically will come as an assembly or as a set, at least consisting of the L-bolt itself, the galvanized, in this case, uh, nuts and washers on both sides of the plate, to mount it to the plate and typically it will come with the plate as well so it comes as an assembly and this will be ordered as an assembly from the supplier one of the other first considerations in terms of specifying the product is the specified size of the product so in this case we've got an l bolt which is 300 mil long and m16 in size some of the other considerations when placing an order for uh, L-bolts or J-bolts is going to be around the finish that's required. So whether it's a zinc plated finish for, in, for internal use or a gel or stainless type product, etc., or other exotic material, they should all be considered and specified directly with the supplier. One of the considerations also for us in placing this assembly into our formwork is to make sure that we consider the need for any supplementary reinforcement as well. And that will be called up by the design engineer if appropriate. Now, a little bit dissimilar to some of the other casting items that we have uh, and, and are going to talk about, these configurations are typically only used for near face installs. So you can kind of see from this view why that would be the case. If we were trying to do this in installation or application in a far face install environment, we would have to try and accommodate the projecting bolts through the base form and deal with that in some way. So it's usually typical that we're installing them in a near face application and suspending them off form or off uh, bearers um, to accommodate them at the right height in the panel or in the concrete element. We'll move across into the panel now and just have a look at how we assemble it, position it, and get it set up ready for the concrete pour. So with the L-bolt configuration that we've got, what we need to make sure, obviously, before we place concrete, is that we have the configuration set exactly where we want it in the form. We don't get a second chance once we pour concrete. Our four bolts, if we get it wrong, all four will be in the wrong spot. So let's just make sure that we've got that dimensioned off. Across to this dimension, we wanted 150 millimetres to our form, which we certainly do. Beyond that, we have another dimension, which is from our form to our plate, which is 100 millimetres, which we do. That's all screwed in place to fix it in. The other dimension we need to check before we go ahead and pour is to make sure that our embedment depth is correct. 
Now in this case we needed 220 millimeters and that's certainly what we're seeing in this case. One final thing that we do is just apply tape on the threads. It'll just give us some protection against concrete getting in there later during the pour and enable us to move the nuts up and down readily. The other thing you'll notice we've done here is we've placed some form across our formwork. The form board is set up by 35 mil off the top of the form or our car surface. That's so that we can get in and finish underneath this area as well quite easily after we place concrete. So now we'll just go ahead, we'll place the tape and be ready to pour concrete. We have L bolts mounted about a template, the template being of steel. So what we're assured of once we use this configuration is a guaranteed placement of inserts with respect to each other along a continuous line, etc. So a really good way to do sets. In this particular case, this would be an ideal configuration for picking up a, a base plate for a column. Um, as you can see, we have plenty of thread available to us for mounting our base plate down on and for giving us adjustment to get our level right with the final base plate and also therefore to give us enough room underneath to apply a structural grout if that's called up in the specification. So just as a, a bit of a recap on the L-bolt itself, obviously the critical factors around the L-bolt are the size, so we're talking about typically a metric bolt of M12, 16, 20 and upwards, a thread length available to us, and importantly, a design embedment depth. So this is the, the depth from the top of the L or J, the hook in the J, to the surface of the concrete. That's what gives us our strength. So they're all sort of critical dimensions for us. The other factor for consideration when specifying L bolts from all thread industries is to nominate the finish. So whether it be gel, stainless, or some other material type or finish type, that needs to be specified to suit the application. What we'll do now is we will strip the form away, our temporary support form away from our L bolt configuration and prepare it for the installation of a finished base plate. Now we have our four bolts exposed to us. What we'll do is we'll run off the, the four top nuts so we can get access to the underside. What you will see with the, the preparation of the bolts underneath is that we've taped the bolts up to prevent concrete slurry from getting in the threads and that'll just give us an easier access to those threads. Obviously, if you have a long series socket of the right size, in this case, 16 mil bolts, 24 diamond, or 24 cross flats socket, long series, it'd be a far quicker way to get the nuts run up the threads and off the L bolts. It does pay to tape up the top threads as well. I didn't do it in this occasion, but certainly to prevent any splash or overthrow of concrete, slurry onto the threads above, would, would pay to tape the top as well. There's our template removed. And with the template removed, we have access to our four L bolts. So assuming that if we wanted to adjust to a height off the surface of the concrete lower than existing, we would run our nuts down after removing the tape on all four, run our nuts down to the required height drop our fixture plate on, make sure that that was level in both directions, this way and this way. Set our nuts appropriately with the washers. Drop our fixture plate on and then apply nuts and washers on top to complete the application. Mindful of the required application torque as well or installation torque for those bolts. Again, check the specification and the documentation that came with the, the L-bolt configuration.